Hello everybody and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about our next storm system that looks to bring some severe weather and flash flooding to the Midwest into the Great Lakes and Missouri Valley and eventually it will help to exacerbate flash flood conditions even further across the Ohio Valley throughout the course of this week. But could there be some relief on the way? We're going to be talking about all those details in this video so stay tuned. As always, if you guys do find this video helpful and you want people to see this information as well, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on and drop a like on the video. Let's get down to business though. And first off, we are taking a look at the energy that's going to help fuel the storm. We're using our European high resolution model for this video. And we are speeding this up to right around the time I'm expecting this video to get posted. What we are looking at here is our 500 millibar winds. These are our winds at the mid-levels of the atmosphere. It can give us a really good picture of where the trough is located across the United States. And in this case, we got a lot of mid-level flow here, strong mid-level flow, across the northern tier of the plains into the high plains here in the upper Midwest. This is gradually going to progress eastward as we get later into the day today. There could be some severe thunderstorms across the upper Midwest in the northern plains here. Uh, given all this strong 500 millibar flow. One of the things is, though, is that this trough is not super pronounced. Sure, there is some pretty strong flow across the northern plains here, but it's not dipping very far into the United States, and typically this would help to raise a lot of moisture northward, but it's not a very pronounced trough, so we're not going to be seeing a ton of widespread wind shear across the Midwest. We're not going to see a ton of severe weather across the Midwest throughout the next couple of days either. I really think it's going to be flash flooding that's the most significant problem throughout the course of the next few days, and then the storm kind of breaks off and forms its own storm system, bringing widespread and heavy rainfall to the Ohio Valley for next week. Now, as we get into Saturday, uh, as we get into tomorrow, I should say, we're going to see some stronger flow developing across the Rockies here. you got a little bit of a trough developing, still nothing too significant. However, as this pushes along across the Dakotas here and into Minnesota, it could bring some strong thunderstorms along with it here. This strong uh, mid-level flow is going to help these storms organize and it's going to help to push these storms along at a pretty fast rate here. But it does break up as it enters into Ontario as we get towards uh, Monday morning of this coming week here. There's not a ton of flow to work with here across the Midwest or Missouri Valley. So a lot of these storms will be relatively disorganized and we do anticipate the redevelopment of thunderstorms across the uh, Midwest here into the central Great Lakes as we get towards Monday. Those storms do not have a very good chance of being severe given this weak mid-level flow that we are seeing by the middle portion of next week. However, there is the possibility of some severe weather today and tomorrow. They're both low-end risks, but let's talk about it. We got a marginal risk of severe weather here from South Dakota into northern Minnesota for today and tonight. We could see a few storms here producing large hail and damaging winds. Not out of the question to get a short-lived supercell storm given the strong wind shear that we have in place and strong instability. There's a slight risk of severe weather here across northeastern South Dakota, southeastern North Dakota, that's a tongue twister, and northwestern Minnesota here where the severe weather threat should be a little bit more widespread but still nothing too crazy to worry about. For tomorrow, a broad marginal risk of severe storms from northeastern Nebraska into central Wisconsin. Again, nothing much to worry about here, but a couple storms here and there could have maybe large hail and wind damage, the possibility of a short-lived supercell. And even though we do expect some pretty heavy rainfall on Sunday and Monday, none of those days look to be organized severe weather events. Now, the bigger problem is going to be flash flooding. So for today, we got a marginal risk of excessive rainfall that could lead to flash flooding from northern Nebraska into northern Minnesota. This was issued by the Weather Prediction Center this morning. Flash flooding is going to be a more major concern today from the Ozarks all the way across the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast. Those areas have been getting battered with rainfall throughout the course of the, of the past week. These areas do not want to see any more rainfall, but they're going to be seeing it, not only throughout the course of the next few days, but then it looks like this storm that we're talking about in today's video is going to dip southward, and it's going to create kind of its own separate storm system. It's just going to bring multiple rounds of training thunderstorms to the Ohio Valley throughout the course of the next week, and that's going to be a problem because a lot of these areas, the ground is very saturated. From the rain that we've been seeing, a lot of these areas are probably already experiencing flash flooding at the moment, so there's going to be problems. Tomorrow, the highest threat of excessive rainfall will actually be from eastern South Dakota into northern Wisconsin, with still some flash flooding possible across the Ohio Valley. 
And then as we get into Sunday, eastern Iowa into northern Michigan looks to be the highest concentration of flash flood potential. And that threat will likely shift southward as we get into Monday. But that's a little bit too far out for the Weather Prediction Center with the marginal and slight risks. Now let's just see what this storm system is looking like. Well, this is just a typical precipitation map here. It can also give us an idea of where the high and low pressure systems are located. Uh, this is right now, we got thunderstorms ongoing across northern Minnesota. Non-severe at this point, but as we get into this evening, they'll become a little bit more widespread with the southwestern ex or southwestward extent. And with the instability buildup that we have and the shear, these storms could be strong to severe. This is our CAPE. CAPE is convective potential energy. So the more of it that we have and the brighter colors that we have on the screen here across the states, uh, that is going to indicate increased energy and instability for these storms to bubble up and continue growing. We got a lot of instability across the plains and the upper Midwest that will help these storms become severe. Now, this will gradually push off to the east as we get later into tonight. Here's tomorrow morning. We got a low pressure located over northeastern Colorado with still some rainfall located to the north here. But eventually, that will trail eastward as we get into tomorrow evening. And then by tomorrow night, we can see explosive development of thunderstorms here from eastern South Dakota into southern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. Heavy rainfall, absolutely a possibility. Flash flooding, a relatively significant concern considering that a lot of this activity will be training over the same area because it will be moving eastward uh, so it looks like one to three inches of rainfall will be common across those regions and then as we get into sunday flash flooding will be possible across areas like wisconsin and northern michigan given these training rounds of heavy rainfall before we see redevelopment of thunderstorms with the interaction of two separate low pressure systems as we get into Sunday night across the central plains and into the Great Lakes. Thunderstorms move eastward across the Great Lakes and northern portion of the Ohio Valley as we get into Monday. We've got several different storms here, uh, but you'll notice, and we're going to switch over to our uh, earlier model here in just a second, that these storms will uh, progressively drop southward into the Ohio Valley. Look at the situation as we get towards midday on Tuesday, widespread showers and thunderstorms from southern Missouri all the way up into New England. All of this rainfall will continue to move southward. So it's going to be a wet week across um, the Ohio Valley and the Ozarks again, maybe even the Northeast as well. We do see a high pressure buildup over Western North Carolina, right over the Appalachian Mountains by Tuesday night. But that's not going to stop rainfall across the Ohio Valley. In fact, it'll just continue to intensify as it drops southward into the Appalachians as we get towards the middle portion of next week. And again, flash flooding, absolutely possible. We've seen substantial flash flooding across Eastern Kentucky, uh, in, in surrounding vicinities across the higher elevations. Of course, the higher elevations are just going to make flash flooding an even bigger danger with all those creeks and streams, lower elevation areas. And then eventually the Gulf states could actually be seeing some much needed rainfall as we get towards next Thursday before dropping southward and gradually dissipating as we get towards Friday of this coming week. Now, anywhere out from here, any new storms that this model tries to show, predictability is too low um, for, you know, for us to look at it at, at all. Uh, but as we get a little bit closer, we'll see any storms from this point onward. It does look like, though, as we get towards the end of next week, the eastern United States will finally see a break from rainfall and precipitation. Now, until then, here's the rainfall that we could be seeing throughout the course of the next week into Friday morning. Again, heavy rainfall likely from eastern, from just South Dakota into the central Great Lakes here. One to three inches are going to be common over the course of the next three or four days. The Ohio Valley is also an epicenter for a lot of this rainfall here with one to four inches being likely flash flooding possible today, tomorrow, uh, and the next day as well before we see all this rainfall dropping southward into the area again. So it's repeated rounds of continuous thunderstorm activity leading to rainfall and very heavy rainfall in some cases down in those regions. But again, relief is on the way. So let's see our Climate Prediction Center's outlook here. This is their six to 10 day precipitation outlook. So this is next Wednesday through the following Sunday. So this is what we are seeing. Above normal precipitation for this, for this time of the year is likely across the western tier of the United States due to that monsoonal surge of rainfall. South Texas as well could be looking at some above average uh, rainfall, but below average rainfall is anticipated across the plains, the Missouri Valley, all of the Midwest into the Northeast as well. That is a good sign for a lot of these areas, because especially across the Ohio Valley and the Appalachians, because they desperately need a break from rainfall. Ground's very saturated. Flash flooding has been very common over the course of the last week. So the weather is finally stabilizing itself, and you're likely going to get a break from excessive rainfall the late portion of next week into the following week. 
Uh, however, a lot of these areas across the Midwest and the plains desperately need rainfall still. Uh, I'm in southeastern Michigan. Uh, we've seen 20% of our of our annual summer rainfall throughout the course of the last 48 hours, but we are still two inches below normal for this time of the year. So we've seen every heavy rainfall across Metro Detroit the past couple of days, but it's still less than we're typically seeing. And a lot of these areas surrounding it desperately need rainfall, especially the further out west that you go, and they're not going to be getting it due to this buildup of drier air. So it's going to be kind of a mixed basket for some areas. Good for some, bad for others. But either way, guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video if you did enjoy it and you want to see more of them be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on and also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well it helps out with the youtube algorithms uh, but until the next video or live stream stay safe and i'll talk to you guys back here next time